Well, everybody, it is May 9th, Sunday. Uh, I just wanted to uh, wish a very happy Mother's Day to all the, uh, the moms out there, but also to all the women out there, because not everybody is a mother, uh, but that doesn't mean that their heart and soul is not in that space. So um, if, if you have kids, if you don't have kids, whatever, let's just celebrate Women's Day every day. Um, you know, I think about my mom, and it's, it's, it's surreal. You know, she passed a couple of years ago, and I remember every time we would land uh, at the airport when I'd come home from a tour, I'd get in a car to come home, and the first person I would call from the car was her, because she always wanted to know that I was home safe and sound. And, um, man, it's, it's weird. I mean, even though this past year I haven't been on a plane yet in over, like, 14 months, which is totally unbelievable. But before that, I would, you know, get home and get in the car and start to call. And it's just one of those things where you're such a creature of habit, uh, especially when it comes to, you know, your family. And there's certain things that you do. So happy Women's Day and Mother's Day to everybody out there. Uh, yesterday we had the, the book signing, and that was really a kick. I was going to post some things today, but people are sending me pictures and videos and stuff. So once I have that stuff and I can look through it all, I'll do a post about that. But it was a lot of fun. So a lot of people, it was great to meet Clubhouse members there. Helen from, came in from Vegas with her husband, and it was great to see them. He was over there giving me a thumbs up with a beard shirt on. And Gina and Toby came and brought me some of Little Herman's brittle, the best brittle I keep. I keep. Mm -hmm. um, and Rick Converse was there, Walter Little. I mean, just tons and tons of, of people that it was really nice to finally put a face to a name. So when we're doing the chat and the live stream, which is gonna be this coming Tuesday, now as soon as I see somebody's name pop up who I've met, then all of a sudden I'm, uh, you know, I have the visual uh, in my mind. And that's, uh, that's always really cool. That's kind of what's come of the one-on-ones that I do. I kind of know everybody pretty well on that now. And uh, so as soon as I see anybody terrible, Mook or Seth or, Anybody I know, I know kind of who they are, Sean, um, Ian. It's, a, it's really cool. I really enjoy that, that aspect of it. So we had a really good time yesterday. Um, Lukather came there. Grant Geisman was there. C.J. Vanston showed up. Um, Fred Fox showed up, which was wonderful. I went to junior high and high school with Fred Fox, and um, I hadn't seen him in quite a while, in a, in a long time. And he was, I think he wrote most of the Happy Days and Laverne and Shirley's and all, all that stuff. He's a, a gifted screenwriter. So it was a kick to see him come up. So had a good time and, uh, and now back to, uh, to reality here. So I was thinking about what to do today. And, um, and the, the best thing was one of my dear old friends, Tony Alexakis, uh, came to town and uh, used to live around the corner from me and moved to uh, outside of Denver and um, came into town yesterday, came to the book signing, and he's sitting here right next to me right now. Come here and stick your face into it. This is Tony Alexakis. Hi, Tony. Hi. Okay, now go sit down. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's it. We're going to hang out today and, uh, and, and stuff, so it's great. Um, but I was thinking about music today, and I thought Sunday, you know, moms and everything, we could use some energy today, just, you know, rather than a, a melancholy day. Moms are always full of energy. That's with, if it wasn't for their energy, we'd all be completely screwed. So I thought... Who better for kind of crazy energy than um, go back and visit some more Warren Zevon today? So um, let me uh, glasses off. Copious notes. I'm not digging the white tablet. Uh, I think I'm going to have to pull back, uh, go down and, and get a couple more of the yellow ones. They're just easier to look at when I'm writing on them. This was all they had at the place that I went to. Um, but this this uh, album we did in 1980 came out in February of 80, and it's, it's Bad Luck Streak in Dancing School. And it was interesting to look that the term dancing school has been a euphemism for brothels 
since the 17th century. I'm just passing along information. I'm not making this stuff up. Um, but um, there's, I'm going to do a couple of songs from that. I just, Warren was such an absolutely unique um, composer and character. And he, compositionally, I mean, he's unique for me the same way like Randy Newman is unique. Just their, you know, everybody else is looking this way at things and they're kind of going like this. They're off in another direction. But Warren was great. You know, great musician, loved his piano playing, his guitar playing, everything, but certainly a, a lyricist like no others, where he could write the goofiest, crazy song and then write the most touching and emotional songs. Because I think a while back I did his Hula Hula Girls. And, uh, you know, it's just funny stuff, but then he could touch your heart deep, really deep at times. So um, this, this song I'm going to start with is Jeannie Needs a Shooter. And this is myself on bass, Rick Murata on drums, Joe Walsh on guitar, and everything else is Warren on this. So let's just take a listen here and uh, enjoy a little Zevon for Mother's Day. Father rode off into the night. Jeannie needs a 
Yvonne, what can I say? <laughs> it's like I, I just love where Warren's mind came from on all these songs. Um, and it was, uh, it was such a tremendous loss when he passed away. I mean, he was young and he had a lot of music left in him. But And uh, there's a great video of him. It was one of his last things he did was uh, on David Letterman's show. And it's on YouTube. Where he talked about his impending demise and how he was approaching it because with cancer and uh, he was an amazing amazing guy but uh, yeah I, I miss him every day I loved working with him I loved hanging with him it was always an adventure he and Waddy were in the Everly Brothers band together in the late 60s so they go back they went back a long long ways and that's why Waddy was so integral in so much of Warren's music and co-wrote Werewolves of London with him and uh, it's uh, these are these are amazing relationships. I I can never emphasize it enough. How somebody's over here and somebody's over here, and these things all come together, and then next thing you have this cohesive project that's happened. So um, love you, Warren. Here's a, a song called Wild Age, and on this one it's myself. And again, Rick Murata. Ricky, I've done tons of records with over the years. And he's uh, um, it was quite a character. His brother Jerry was played with Gabriel. He was a drummer. Is a drummer, um, but Rick toured for for a, a period of time with James Taylor. And when we did Sesame Street uh, with Oscar the Grouch, uh, Rick was the drummer on that, along with Billy Payne and Dan Dugmore and Waddy on that. Waddy and I were begging the the people at um, the Muppet. Um, people to let us just stay with them <laughs> it's like we were having such a good time so make us the house band for you guys so that was fun so that was that we had david lindley is on this track also zevon's playing piano and the not a bad background vocal section um don henley and glenn fry on this miss glenn so here's wild age here we go Tony and I are going to dance now.
one of those quick fades after some of these long ones I've been doing that go on for like six minutes. This is like, hmm. Mm. I love listening to Lindley play. I've known David since 1968 when he was in a band called Kaleidoscope and they were opening for the Mothers of Invention. And I was blown away by him then and every chance I've ever had to play with Lindley is just remarkable. And when the section was drawing to its close as a, as a viable band at the end of the 70s, Lindley had joined forces with us and uh, man, it was unbelievable working with him. Just, just loved it, so. Um, and also um, Joe Lala played with us a bunch at that point, played percussion with us. And uh, Joe, I mean, he, he was in, did Manassas. Uh, he was in lots of things, worked a lot with Stephen Stills and all those cats, but he, he was a, a staple percussion-wise around Los Angeles. And he had a big parrot that he used to walk around on his shoulder. And you could tell about a block away when Joe was coming because he would walk away from me and you'd see this stream of white down his back where the parrot was always pooping down his back. And we'd go, Joe, just wash the shirt, please, just wash the shirt. But Joe could make the best red sauce. Sometimes he'd show up at sessions with pasta with his red sauce, and he could have ruled the world with the red sauce he made. It was amazing. So all, all these cats, but Lindley, is something special. I'm gonna speed along here. This is a song called Jungle Work. Um, and it's again me and Rick Murata on this Joe Walsh. Um, Zevon is doing synth guitar, all kinds. He does everything. And then on the background vocals on this is Jorge Calderon and Rick Murata singing background on this. So this is called Jungle Work. I'll give you this in one more tune. <laughs>
sounded like Rick had a syndrome tucked in there. Every one, every one of those, every other bars you hear the boo, boo in there. Boy, those things were the rave. Russ really nailed them when when he got a set because he did a lot of low tunings with them where everybody else was doing it. Boo, 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 boo. He used them at like low toms and they really accentuated the kit really well. But man, they... They came and went pretty fast. I hope Joe Pollard invested wisely on those things because they uh, they had their moment in the sun and then then gone. But yeah, just Warren's writing is so unique. It's not like anybody else. When I hear a Zevon tune, it's generally and there's Warren again. So I'm I'm going to play the the title track to the album, and um, it's Bad Luck. Uh, and uh, in, in dancing school, and it's again, it's myself, Ricky Murata on drums, Zevon um, on guitar, vocals, everything else, and David Lindley on this. So I'll give you this one last little niblet here of, uh, of Warren Zevon. See what I, what I tell you. Like Warren, you know, I don't, you know, I don't hear anybody else that sounds like that. It's, it's amazing. Miss you, Warren. There's a, a huge campaign that's been going on for ages trying to get him inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and it's like so overdue. Even though he would probably think it was all bullshit anyhow, but uh, you know, he he deserves the recognition because he's one of the most unique artists I've ever worked with, and uh, I miss him profoundly. But uh, so that's Bad Luck Streak in Dancing School. And there's lots of other great songs in it. So go check it out and check out Warren's body of work because it's he's a really incredible artist. And I, I'm going to come back and visit him on a fairly regular basis. And he was part of that whole scene with, you know, the Eagles and Jackson and 
James and everybody. I mean, it was the, the he was like one of the mainstays in that 70s community here in, in Los Angeles. And um, just appreciate him so much. So um, one more shout out there. Thank you, Toby, for my little Herman's brittle. This is really the best brittle you'll ever have in your life. And Herman Matthews is one of the best drummers around. So, you know, a great, great drummer that makes the best peanut brittle. What can I say? So happy, happy Women's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Non-Mother's Day. Just let's celebrate women in our lives here. Because this is, uh, you know, without them, I w this would just be a camera looking at an empty room had my, no my mom not been here. Hmm. Let me think about that. And then I want everybody just to say goodbye and just Tony. Come over here. Say hello to my 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 gang. Hello, guys. <clears throat> this is the man. I'm the woman when Tony's around, though. It's uh, <laughs> we have an arrangement. So, okay. Take good care, everybody, and I will see you tomorrow. I actually have a session tomorrow with Wadi, um, so I'm looking forward to that. We'll be in the studio together, so that's going to be great. So, have a great day. Uh, a shout out. I know there's tons of moms that are working crazy uh, in the hospitals in all kinds of care situations today with people that are still suffering through this pandemic. So a double shout out to you as happy Mother's Day and my heart's with you. And thank you so much for all you do. You are really, truly the heroes of, of this day and age. So take good care and I will, um, I'll see you tomorrow. Okay. And thanks for everybody who showed up at the uh, book signing yesterday. It was really, really a fun thing. And the live stream is Tuesday at uh, 3 p.m. again, so we'll see you this coming Tuesday. Okay, bye-bye.